I've been getting educated recently. I've learned that the way to empower women in video games, apparently, is not to make them attractive. It's to make them as undesirable, as grotesque, as obese as possible. And of course, it's weirdo, creepy men who've decided this on behalf of women. It's not women themselves saying any of this at all. But the reason I bring it up is because a game called Stellar Blade on the PS5... It's been making waves recently. People are talking about it as a demo just came out. And the main character in this game, she's kind of got that stereotypical anime girl look, but in 3D. So the skimpy outfits, nothing to the imagination, curves in the right places, which a good thing this is a Sony game because Microsoft recently said that they're trying to make sure their studios don't have women with any curves in them, because apparently that's very bad. That might trigger the male gaze. So there's really no drama here for sensible people. You've got a sexy protagonist in a game. It's kind of a Souls-like, Sekiro, like I'm hearing. Apparently it's a good time, according to people who've played the demo. But of course, as usual, we've got the usual suspects melting down. They are going crazy, even though they've put a female protagonist in a game. It's not the right sort of female protagonist. It's got to be sort of the bookworm-looking girl, or it's got to be an Abby from The Last of Us 2, where they're sort of built like a man. They're apparently the only categories of women that are allowed in gaming of course. So we will have a look at what some of the crazies are saying, but I've got to be honest, for myself, I don't really have main character's attractiveness super high on my list of the reasons I would play a game. Now, these people would call me liars for saying that. They'd go, no, 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 you've always been crying about if there's a, an ugly woman or an ugly character forced into a game. What are you talking about? Well, there's a very key difference here. For me, it's about priorities. So in this game, the protagonist making them look this way has obviously been a priority for them, but it really just tells me they're focused on it being a good time where you can jump in. It's a bit of a fantasy all around. You've got this character jumping around, fighting big monsters and everything. It's not meant to be super realistic, and there's no real agenda here. But then if you get a game like the upcoming Fable, and you look at this character, the first thing you think is that this might be the ugliest thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's not like they've done this for artistic reasons. They've made the character look this way for purely political reasons. They want to talk down to their audience. They want the male audience of this game, which they know is the main audience of video games. They want them to take a good hard look at themselves and realize that again, that male gaze is bad. They want to lecture you and tell you that your entire worldview is bad. And this face is kind of representative of that. And they even try and say, this is what a normal woman looks like. If you had any experience with women, you would know this. Even though their only experience with women is, is maybe the lady sitting next to them at their game company who's never done anything physical in their life. Next to them on the right is, is a blue-haired person who calls themselves a woman, but they were a man last week. And, and those are supposedly normal women that they interact with that are representative of, of the common woman. And for most of us, if you've gone to a gym or you've done anything physical, you will see normal girls with normal faces and normally proportioned bodies. But we'll jump now into Reset Era, which is kind of a, a hellscape of the internet, humanity. And if you want to see the low lights of the human race, this is where you would go. And we've got someone here who says, Stellar Blade, this will become the all-time poster child for games with one fatal flaw. And by that, he's referring to the main character looking a certain way. If, if women look this way, I'm sure there's women who work at the game studio. The main character was modelled after a real person, I believe, in South Korea. No, 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 all that doesn't matter. This game has a huge flaw and we must get mad. But even that moniker doesn't do justice to how ludicrous the content is. You can't even claim making it this way was a cop-out or a way to make development easier. It's obvious from the demo that they put an extremely high amount of effort into making the camera angles and animations a very deliberate and specific way. Now, marketing, I mean, what they've done with this main character, I mean, it's pretty good marketing because it will get people's attention. Now, will the game be a success purely because of the visuals? I don't think so. It still needs to be a good game. 
Again, apparently it's a bit of a Souls-like. If they can do that well, I will be interested. But if it's a dud in the gameplay department, I won't care about the look, so I won't buy it. The thing is though, marketing does matter, and for millions of years of human history, you've had attractive people as the face of the marketing. It just simply makes sense. It's only been in the last few years we'll have obese lingerie models showing off underwear, and apparently that's a great thing. Those companies are probably failing, like Dove and Gillette and, and all of that sort of nonsense. But for, for normal people, they see attractive people and they're more likely going to be interested in, in something. They're going to pay attention. And then this person says, every last person in the credits would have been in on the whole thing. Like it's some sort of huge conspiracy that there's an attractive woman in a video game, the face of a video game. This person's acting like in the boardroom of this game company. You had the suit smoking their cigars. <laughs> we're going to make a woman look good in this game. Look at what we're doing here. How evil are we? Apparently that's how it is according to this person. It's really gross that Sony put their names on the thing. Even in part. Do better. Even the sound effects are totally out of character. Sounds like a terrified teenage girl. How did the strong warrior character be keep being told that she is? These double standards of these people. So apparently if the female character doesn't sound a certain way, if she's not roaring, if she doesn't have a deep voice, uh, apparently then it, it's totally unrealistic and they need to shame the character and the way she was written. What's going on here? Because if we look at Bayonetta 2... This is a Nintendo title that came out, what, like 10 years ago now? But no one gave a toss about this. And Bayonetta 3 was more recent. No one cared about that either. But if you look at this character design, it's arguably more revealing. And I'm not sure what the exception is, why this is okay. Is it because she's wearing glasses? I mentioned that bookworm stereotype earlier. A video game character female has to be a bookworm or something for that to be okay. Is it the glasses that make it all good despite the skimpy outfit? Seemingly, because I can't see what fails to make this all one big double standard. I think what it really is, is you've got a group of people who have basically said, oh, finally, we get a video game where the girl, at, at least they're trying to make her attractive. They're not literally taking an actress who is beautiful. This happens all the time. You get a, a beautiful actress model who they hire, and then when they're put into the game, the developers literally make her uglier on purpose, make them just look weird, again, for the whole male gaze thing. And that's what people are just sick of, because your whole motivation is some sort of political agenda talking down to the audience because you hate your audience. You hate the people who buy these video games. So people see a game like Stellar Blade where that isn't happening and suddenly you're all over it going, oh my god, sexism, feminism is dying. Oh my god, what is this? He ends here with, she's meant to be a helpless sex doll, not an actual strong protagonist who just happens to have a ridiculous body, as is the case with her contemporaries. Why does this even matter? Why is it that Every single female character has to stick to a particular mold. I don't even think any of this is true. I mean, she's destroying bosses, she's killing creatures in the game, so how is she not strong? But let's say that she wasn't, that it, she actually was helpless. Is that really a big deal? Why does every character have to be exactly the same? Whenever you watch these movies, these Netflix shows, they seem to want, which is ironic, women in media to be cartoon characters where they're literally the same personality in everything. They've got to tick a certain box. They're powerful, they're strong, they're independent. Any vulnerabilities, any flaws, and suddenly it's sexism. And then it ends up being the same for the guys. Especially if they're white, they've got to be bumbling fools who aren't competent at anything. And it seems unless you do this, these people will cry foul and they'll totally melt down. We've got someone else here. I tend to be ambivalent with sexualized character designs in games, but everything about Stellar Blade is just beyond embarrassing and gross. Kinda hate how it's Sony funded and published. I feel like it wouldn't be getting anywhere nearly as much media attention as it is if it wasn't. Well, maybe it is that Sony are just chasing an audience that actually buys video games. They tried to appeal to you losers for the longest time. The Last of Us Part 2, the recent Spider-Man game. It cost them 300 million. And I think the Mary Jane character, I'm not a big Spider-Man person, I might have got that name wrong. But Mary Jane, I think it is. 
she looks kind of weird, but then the male character is like male model-esque and they love to do this and then suddenly the games don't sell as well because the people who are most outspoken about these feminism, sexism issues in games, you don't buy anything, you crusade online, you don't actually consume the entertainment because you've got no time for it, you're too busy on Twitter or whatever. So now Sony are pivoting and going, you know what, let's just make a good game, let the artists do what they do interesting character design, something a bit different, and maybe this game will be a success. And it continues. I think it just boils down to these kinds of men not liking women having their own autonomy and agency. Centralized video game characters are fine because they don't have agency. A woman being in control of her own sexuality is intimidating for them because they no longer feel in control of said women. These people get very deep, don't they? Armchair psychologists, they know exactly what everyone's thinking. Millions of people are probably going to buy these games and, and apparently it's this. Anyone who buys Stellar Blade, they just want to control women. They want them locked up in chains. They want to go back 300 years, get them back in the kitchen. That's what this is all about apparently. It, it could it simply be common sense that they see game, they think, looks cool, woman on the cover, yeah, she looks nice, I'm going to buy the game. It couldn't be that, it's literally about control. These people sit there thinking about this all day, it's very sad. They're the same kinds of guys that will regularly watch porn, but claim Twitch streamers and such are exploiting men. Again, maybe a little bit of common sense. Most guys, they can probably find what they want to get off to online for free. They don't want to be throwing their money away at girls on Twitch who use their body as a used car lot. Come on, just use your brain for a second, stop overthinking it all. Now this has been mentioned a lot, but the Stellar Blade model in game is actually based off a real life person in South Korea. So the idea that it's totally make-believe fantasy, that male gaze, these, oh my god, these shut-ins who've never seen a, a real woman, well it's disproven because they scanned a real woman and used her as a base to create the Stellar Blade character. Now they've tried a big gotcha here, where these insane morons have said, I'm gonna just repost this here for posterity, but I've seen the Eves based on an in real life person argument too much for my liking, cause I'm not sure what they kept. Her face was crafted by the dev team, and her body was clearly redesigned for way more curves. It makes me sad when even outside this context, the models aren't good enough. Haha, <laughs> lol. So these people actually think it's strange that the in-game model isn't totally a replica of a real-life person. So you've scanned the real-life model, you've taken that as a base, and then you've made some adjustments because, hey, a video game isn't real life, it's fantasy, it's make-believe. That, to me, is totally normal. A game like a book, like an animated movie, you can go crazy. You can make people look however you want, you can have monsters, all of the other stuff that Stellar Blade has. Apparently, that's really bad, unless you're making the in-game character to look identical to the real life model, that's again sexist, it's racist, whatever else it might be. What happens when you do what these people are saying? You make everyone look the same. It kills immersion because every time you play another game, every character looks the same. And I will give you an example of this. If we go back to Jedi Fallen Order, the new one, Jedi Survivor, you've got this character and she might look familiar because she's also in Suicide Squad. She's in a lot of different games. And her voice actress, her face is basically copy and pasted into the game. This is immersion breaking. I see this person in like every second game now. And I hate to be pessimistic, but I honestly think that the reason that they're hiring this individual is purely again for diversity reasons, because they want her face, so they can put her face in the game. And some people might say it's not the most conventionally attractive person. So it ticks all these video game boxes of the modern day where you have a person of color, you get the voice actress of color as well and everything else that goes with it. It doesn't feel quite right. Why can't you hire that voice actress and make her look different every time? It seems like there's something else at play here. These people continue to lose 
lose their minds. It's all a bit funny because even if they designed the Stellar Blade character exactly how these people want, if they bowed down, bent the knee and said, okay, okay, we'll, we'll do everything you ask, these people wouldn't buy the game anyway, so your game would fail and you'd lose. I'm glad this dev is standing up to them. They've said a few base things online, essentially implying we're not going to listen to you. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to listen to the right people who actually buy video games and want to support us. And I'm pretty sure the studio who makes Stellar Blade, they gave every employee a PS5 or something so they can enjoy the game. Sounds like a good studio. They're doing a good thing. If the game's good, if it ever comes to PC, I might check it out. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.